In this lesson, we're going to learn that pressure can be both wanted and unwanted. It can be useful and it can be a nuisance. Before we do that, we remember that it is precisely pressure which enables an object to cut or penetrate the surface of a material. That's to say, when we want to cut or pierce a surface, then we need the pressure to be high. And this is precisely so in the case of a, a knife, for example, or a nail which we're going to hammer into a piece of wood. We remember that the pressure of an applied force relates the force applied to the area of contact. That's to say is equal to the force F divided by the area A. So in situations where we want this pressure to be a maximum, then we need the area of contact to be as small as possible. So for that reason, knives are sharp. It sounds like an obvious statement, but it's really a consequence of this simple formula. By making the knife sharp, or by making the nail pointed, what we're doing is reducing the area of contact for an applied force. And that maximizes the pressure and, and so enables the nail or the knife to cut into the material. So in these cases, the pressure is, is maximized by, what's the nail? <laughs> by reducing the contact area. But there are some situations where we don't want to cut, pierce or penetrate a material. For example, if you have to go to work on a day like this, you'll find that the pressure produced by your feet on the snow will result in you easily sinking in the snow. So you don't want the pressure exerted to be large. You want to minimize the pressure. So in this case, we're going to do something to increase the area of contact between yourself and the snow. For example, we'll use some snowshoes. Okay, again, the same formula applies. The pressure produced by the snowshoes is equal to F. That's your weight pushing down on the snow divided by A, the area of contact between your shoes and the surface. So by maximizing this area of contact, we reduce the pressure. So this is the exact opposite of this statement here. In this case, now this is the opposite. So we say pressure in this case is minimized by increasing the contact area. Now exactly the same principle was applied in the design of the tank. Now, we remember that the wheel, despite being an absolutely brilliant invention, has one or two serious drawbacks, especially when it's being driven over very wet or boggy soft ground. We remember that actually there's only a very small area of contact between a wheel and uh, the surface by nature of geometry. And as a result of that, the pressure exerted by a wheel on soft ground can be quite large. So the tank designers overcame this problem by wrapping a caterpillar track around the wheels like this. And so by using this caterpillar track, the weight of the tank is spread over a larger area. So remembering then, again, that the pressure is equal to the force divided by the area. If we increase the area of contact by introducing caterpillar tracks, then we reduce the pressure. And so reduce the chances of the vehicle penetrating the thick mud or soft ground and getting stuck.